We've spoken to a lot of Abley alums who talk about being one of the few or only black voices in the boardroom. So how do you help companies, corporations and organizations become more inclusive and open the door to people of color? I believe the recent events have brought us into this full focus on why it's important and that critical need for inclusion. Um, as we uh, have gone along in our program, we actually talk about it's more than just checking the box if if organizations do decide to be more become more diverse it's more important it's, it's not as important to just check the box of diversity it is very critical that you create an environment of inclusion even your board service. You have every single thing that you need in order to be the best board leader out there or the best commissioner.
and welcome to a very special farewell event as we celebrate the leadership and legacy of Yvette Chappelle Ingram and her 10 years of service to the African American Board Leadership Institute, also known as ABLE. Hello, I'm Leslie Sykes, your host for the evening. On behalf of ABLE, I'd like to acknowledge tonight's event sponsor, the Annenberg Foundation, a family foundation that provides funding and support to nonprofit organizations in the United States and globally. The foundation believes in funding organizations that have a deep level of community involvement, are led by effective leaders, and tackle challenging and timely problems. Specific organizational attributes value by the foundation are visionary leadership, impact, sustainability, innovation, organizational strength, network of partnerships, plus the commitment to underserved populations. Annenberg has been a longtime supporter of ABLE, and we are grateful for their continued support. For the event's official welcome, here are two of ABLE's founding board members, Beverly Ryder and Eugene Boykins. Thank you, Leslie. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eugene Boykins, and I am one of the co-founding members of the African American Board Leadership Institute, or ABLE. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone, our sponsors and supporters, and our ABLE alumni family to the retirement and celebration of ABLE's co-founding board member, Ms. Yvette Chappelle Ingram. Also, uh, I'd like to thank Leslie Sykes, who is, as most of you know, the co-anchor of the ABC 7 Morning Show from 4.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. for all you early birds and insomniacs. And a little bit about Leslie. She joined ABC 7 in 1994. And Leslie was born my hometown of San Diego, California, and grew up in Compton. She attended St. Joseph High School and then Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, where she majored in, in English. When she graduated, Leslie took a job as a general assignment reporter in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. Uh, Leslie completed an inter internship at KCOP and was desk assistant at 8K TTV before landing her first job on air at Hattiesburg, Mississippi at WDAM. There she reported, landed, anchored three uh, shows a day and produced a newscast. She went on to work at WVUE in New Orleans, Louisiana. Again, Leslie, thank you for your support of this event and ably. I also want to thank ABC7 because they've been an ongoing supporter from a media standpoint to ABLE, and we are very grateful for that. Now, for those of you who may not know, uh, the mission of the African American Board Leadership Institute, uh, or ABLE, is to strengthen nonprofit, public, and private organizations, recruiting, preparing, and assisting with the placement of African American professionals on a broad range of governing boards. It is a project of community partners, which is our fiscal sponsor that provides a full range of administrative and financial services. Uh, we are very grateful for them too. Uh, just how I got involved with ABLE is a quick little story. Uh, I was volun recruited <laughs> by a vet uh, 11 years ago. She called me on the phone and said, and I've been doing a bit way before that. She said, Gene, I have a project that you're gonna be interested in and we want you to come listen to it and help us out. I said, wait a minute, Yvette, I just retired. I don't need another project. She said, just come to have breakfast and we'll talk about it. So I did and I walked in and there was a vet. It was very persuasive. And then I noticed she brought heavy artillery with her, Virgil Roberts. So with that, that's how I quickly got involved in it. Now I'd like to introduce you to one of my friends and co-founding board member, Ms. Beverly Ryder. Bev, it's on you. 
Great, Jean. Thanks so much. And welcome to everyone for this evening's festivities. It's been an honor to be part of Abley, this 10-year journey, and a special privilege to work and know Yvette. As most of you know, Abley began as a big idea by Virgil and Yvette and has blossomed into a sustainable, thriving institution recognized by, with its unique approach to governance, leadership training, and its commitment to increasing the representation of African Americans on boards. Starting a new organization from a mere idea with minimal resources is not for the faint of heart. It requires an entrepreneurial spirit, a high tolerance for risk, persistence, passion, and consistent funding to grow a startup into a functioning organization. And our board, along with Yvette, rolled up our sleeves to create the programmatic foundation for Abley in its first year, including designing the curriculum, building staff, and raising startup funds. But Yvette had the monumental job of building the infrastructure, creating relationships, doing ongoing fundraising, generating new programs and strategies, and recruiting participants while keeping the lights on. Throughout this journey, Yvette has been our guiding light and barometer, never taking her eye off the prize. She was the every woman who committed all of her energy, heart, and spirit to enable a small organization to achieve ambitious goals that at times seem bigger than all of us. Yvette is a remarkable person, the master organizer, the recruiter extraordinaire, the expert relationship builder and fundraiser. And as Jean said, you can't say no to Yvette. She persistently coaxes you with her gentle smile and enthusiasm until you agree to take on an assignment or lead another effort. And after you say yes and you volunteer for the umpteenth time, you realize that you've been voluntold. Very well. <laughs> well done, Yvette. She is a friend, cheerleader, and counselor to our 700 graduates and celebrates them as members of her Abley family. And I am personally inspired by her optimism, boundless energy, and despite the obstacles, heartache, or disappointments she has faced, she always sees the glass half full and moves forward. So Yvette, I'm sending you a big hug and a huge thank you in appreciation for your dedication, your inspiration, and your friendship over the years. And we all at Abley couldn't have done it without you. So tonight, in tribute to you, Jean and I are excited on the behalf of the board to announce the launch of the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund. This fund will enable Abley to continue the necessary work to bring diversity, equity, and inclusion to the boardroom. The Leadership Legacy Fund is listed on the donor page of the Abley website, and I hope all of you will join us in giving generously in honor of Yvette. So Yvette, wishing you all the best on your retirement. And now I'll turn the program over to Leslie Sykes, our MC. Thank you, Beverly and Jean, for the warm welcome and the fascinating information about the illustrious history and mission of Abley. What a rich legacy. At this time, we're excited to announce the launch of the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund. During Yvette's time leading Abley, she remained committed to its mission, which has led the organization to produce hundreds of trained African-American professionals equipped for board leadership service, the majority of whom are sitting at boardroom tables today. As a tribute to her vision, her hard work, and innovative ideas, the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund was created. We ask you to unite with us in support of board equity, social justice, leadership development, and to increase diversity at the board level. Your gift to Abley will allow us to continue to build on the foundation laid by the co-founders. You can do so by scanning the QR code in the lower left of the screen with your mobile device. The code will be made available again during the program. Thank you in advance for your contribution. Now, as you settle in for this special occasion, we would like to welcome Robin Chopra, mixologist extraordinaire and head of business development for the Spirit Guild to introduce tonight's signature non-alcoholic cocktail. Take it away, Robin. Hi, everybody. My name is Robin Chopra, and I'm coming to you today from the Spirit Guild Distillery right here in downtown Los Angeles. We are a fully functioning small business craft distillery and uh, as well, I'm a bartender mixologist of the past 10 years and thrilled to be a part of this momentous occasion. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a mocktail 
alcohol optional, um, mocktail by the name of Yvette's Legacy Smash. And uh, let's get into it. Super simple drink using some really fresh flavors, great for summertime and great for an occasion like this. So uh, we've got some grapefruit juice, some basil, raspberries, honey, jasmine tea and club soda. To start off, I'm actually gonna turn, mix the honey and the jasmine tea into a syrup and it's super simple, let me show you. So first you're gonna take a cup and your jasmine green tea and make a concentrated brew. So we're gonna take two ounces of boiling water and then to that we're going to add two ounces of honey. Uh, we're gonna give this about a minute or two to brew before we do that. And the uh, reason we wanna do that is obviously for the flavor that the jasmine tea brings, but also if you're mixing with pure honey, you actually need to dilute it a little bit because it's a little too thick and rich to mix into a cold beverage. You maybe have noticed that if you've tried to add it to honey uh, or to lemonade or anything like that. So you always wanna dilute your honey. And in this case, by incorporating the jasmine tea, we're just adding that much more depth and complexity to our mocktail. So now with our liquid ingredients, or rather, before we get into the ingredients, um, the tools you'll want ideally to make this cocktail or mocktail is a shaking set. This is a very traditional barware. If you don't have a shaking set, you could also use a protein mixer or you could use a mason jar with a lid. You basically just want something that you can put ice into, seal and shake to chill, dilute, aerate, and create that perfect mocktail. I'm also gonna be using this to measure. This is a jigger, but you could also use a measuring cup, bar spoon, strainer, of course my quarter cup measuring cup. Um, now, to get into our liquid ingredients. So first we're gonna take fresh grapefruit juice. There is, no, uh, there is no replacement for fresh. In my experience, you just have to get a piece of fruit, cut it in half, and uh, squeeze it. I'm gonna be using this handy juice press, but if you don't have that at home, you can use your hands. All right. So we wanna get about um, three ounces of juice. And thankfully grapefruits are so big and juicy. One grapefruit should just about do the trick. So to the mixing glass, we're gonna do three ounces of grapefruit juice. Then we're gonna add some fresh herbs. I'm using basil, but I oftentimes uh, recommend that people use what they have. Um, when you're mixing with berries and any type of soft, fresh herb, the flavors are really complimentary. I love basil, grapefruit, raspberry, but if you have rosemary or if you have blueberries or blackberries, feel free to mix it up and get creative. That's kind of part of the fun of making cocktails. So we've got our basil in there. Now we're gonna add some fresh raspberries. And now comes the smash part. So this is where you're gonna wanna take a muddler and mash all these ingredients together to fully incorporate. And we're basically looking for a nice paste consistency. We don't need to go too far because it's gonna break down even further when we shake it with ice. So now that we have raspberry, grapefruit, and basil, we can add our honey syrup, um, or jasmine honey syrup. So all I'm gonna do is take equal parts of honey and add it to that jasmine tea that I just brewed. Let's mix this to incorporate. Give the bag a little squeeze. And there we have a beautiful aromatic jasmine honey syrup. And we're gonna go with three quarters of an ounce. And that's it, now it's time to shake. So when you're shaking a cocktail or mocktail, I always recommend that you shake it longer and harder than you might suspect. That's because one, we wanna make sure that cocktail is ice cold and we also wanna aerate and mix those ingredients to create a really nice frothy texture that's gonna play really nice when we add those bubbles. So uh, extra hard about five to 10 seconds.
That should do the trick. Now, this is intended to be a mocktail, but if you did want to add booze, now would be the time. For a drink like this with fresh raspberry, grapefruit, herbs, um, definitely I recommend a lighter spirit. Um, I can't help but mention the gin that we make here in-house. So this is Starkeeper Gin. We make it right on this equipment behind me from scratch in super small batches. It's a gin distilled from local oranges grown here in California, as well as a blend of exotic and local botanicals. Would work beautifully in this, but we're gonna go non-alcoholic for today. So before we add our liquid, we're gonna add some ice to our glass and then strain it. You see we've got a beautiful color and texture there. And for the final step, we're gonna add club soda. Now, when you're working with soda, I definitely recommend make sure it's been sitting in the fridge for a while and adequately chilled. You wanna make sure that those bubbles are nice and cold and that it's not bringing the temperature of your drink down. And final step, of course, is to garnish. So take a handful of berries, take some of this beautiful basil we have here, and nestle it right there onto your cocktail. And there we have it, Yvette's Legacy Smash. To Yvette, to all the hard work you've done in the last 10 years and the amazing accomplishments, wishing you the best in retirement. Cheers. Thank you, Robin, and cheers to you, Yvette. Now, for those of you just joining us, welcome to the farewell celebration highlighting Yvette Chappelle Ingram's 10 years of service to the African American Board Leadership Institute. As mentioned earlier, please take a moment to scan the QR code on the screen to contribute to the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund and ongoing initiatives to support ABLE's commitment to strengthening and diversifying leadership in nonprofit, public, and private organizations. We will now hear from other founding board members who will share sentiments and memories of Yvette and the organization from inception to now. First of all, Yvette, I want to offer my sincere congratulations as you approach this significant milestone. As one who has been enjoying retirement for almost six years now, I can commend it to you highly, and I'm delighted to welcome you to what I believe will be the most satisfying stage of your life. When I was first introduced to the idea of ABLE, preparing African Americans for significant service on governing boards, it was such a compelling proposition that I was honored to be a part of the founding board. But you and I both know that it takes more than an idea to create an entity that empowers both individuals and organizations to achieve their goals and objectives. You have been there for a decade, turning that intriguing idea into a solid reality. Well done, Yvette, well done. Congratulations, Yvette. I am so happy for you that you're finally going to get to have that retirement you so deserve. When Virgil approached several of us years ago, and it seemed like decades now, about founding ABLE as board members, none of us realized the impact you as our leader would have on the face of governance in Los Angeles, and in fact, all over the country. Abley has been a bright light, and your consistent devotion to its mission and purpose has been stellar. I cannot thank you enough for all you have done to diversify boards all over the state of California. The reputation of the organization is due to your good and consistent work. I hope that you enjoy every single moment of your retirement. And this little video message comes with my sincere thanks, appreciation, and admiration for the work you've done. Hi, Yvette, Paul Hudson, past board member and instructor with ABLE. I want to join so many others in celebrating your career and thanking you for all you've done and all you do. Ably. I remember those early days as a board member when the board was an extension of the staff and 
you and I working so many hours around the budget and the financial statements and the formatting of the, of the board report. Um, those early days, I felt like part of the staff. Uh, and then with the board leadership program and those hours spent at LaTanya's house and building the curriculum and collaborating around the outcomes, um, your work, your passion, your commitment, your energy, um, made ably what it is today and your footprint your handprint is all over the past the present and the future um, i wish you the best in whatever you do and i stand ready to stand beside you again congratulations have fun hello yvette is vincent and i just wanted to say i i still remember the first time i met you we were at a meet the grant makers panel when i was just starting liberty hill and I looked out in the room and I said to myself, who brought together all these black people who are leading organizations that need information about funding? And it was you. And I remember our conversation after that amazing Meet the Funders panel about what can we do to help these amazing leaders find not just the money from foundations, to help them do the work, but to help them find black people and others who can serve on their boards to help them to keep doing the work after they got the grants. And it was such um, an honor to work with you and Virgil and Ravita and the entire team to found ABLY and to create a decade of creating leaders who are now doing what we talked about at that, after we had that, um, after we first met from that Grantmaker session. Um, so I hope that you know that you are leaving behind an amazing legacy, not only from the organization of ABLY, but from the many organizations who you have impacted by creating a vehicle for them to get amazing board members who know not only how to be good board members, but how to be effective stewards of resources, and how to make sure that they're keeping a black lens first. And me personally, I've always appreciated your friendship, your mentorship, your spirit, your heart, your um, sense of joy. Um, and I just want to send you all of my love all of my congratulations, all of my well wishes as you are uh, passing the baton um, for Abley. I, I, whoever steps in your shoes after you, they have some big pumps to fill. Um, and um, I just want to let you know that I say again that I love you dearly. Um, thank you for everything you've done. And um, best of luck in your next phase of life. Congratulations, Yvette, on your well-deserved retirement. I remember when we first met in 2014 at the California Club. I was hosting an NACD event there, and you attended. You walked right up to me after the program and asked if I would consider moderating a corporate director's pathway program for ABLE, and I agreed. Several workshops later, you asked if I would consider joining the board. You were quite convincing, as you often are. I remember we sat at breakfast one day and you outlined the roles and responsibilities and the commitments to serve on the ABLE board. You were so convincing that I agreed to and served a three-year commitment. You know, serving on the AB board was really a fantastic time for me. I really, really enjoyed working with you, and Virgil, and Beverly, Carl, Jean, Paul, Yolanda, and Vicky. It was quite a good time. We didn't always agree on all things, especially during our political debates, but we got the job done. Serving as the chair of the non-gov committee and, and working with you to refresh the board and to 
update some of the governor's policies was really a joy for me. I know that it was difficult for me to leave the ABLE board, but you, you know that I had some other commitments that I had to honor. So as I look back, I want to say thank you for your professionalism. We all know that ABLE would not be the same without your leadership. I want to wish you the best of luck in the future. I'm sure we'll see each other soon. You take care. Welcome all you guys out there in Zoom world. We're all here celebrating Yvette's retirement ceremony. And I hope you guys are having a great time. I am DJ Mex, one half of the Kick DJs, and I'm here controlling your eardrums for the rest of the night. If you were blessed enough to get one of those signature drinks, enjoy and just sit back and relax. Thank you to these amazing founding board members. Yvette, your leadership rings true through these amazing stories. It's clear that the journey to today wasn't an easy one, but your determination and your belief in Abley's mission and impact kept you going. And for that, we applaud you. Thank you again to our event sponsor, the Annenberg Foundation. Your contribution and continued support is a true testament to the foundation's belief in Abley's mission. We will now hear from current Abley board members who continue to drive the mission forward and carry out the work started by the co-founders. They will speak to the expansion and development of Abley's vision in thought leadership. Yvette, it seems like everywhere you've been, you've managed to bring me along, and it's been really a joy to be a part of your professional journey. I am really particularly honored to have had the opportunity to work with you and Virgil and other members of the board to bring your vision of the African American Board Leadership Institute to life. It's amazing how many African American professionals this work has touched and imagine where we would be had the two of you not imagined an opportunity for developing leaders for our communities. I can't say goodbye. I do wish you well. I do expect that we will continue on the journey together and I'm excited to see where we go next. Yvette, congratulations on 10 outstanding years as Abley's president and CEO. I've had the honor of knowing you for most of that time. I first met you as a member of class five of the board leadership program. And I will never forget that I met you probably 10 minutes into arriving to the, to the location and you were just an incredible light of positive energy. And you were so welcoming and you really set the tone for what my experience with Avery would be like moving forward. And for that, I thank you. And for the last several years, I've had the tremendous privilege of serving alongside you as a member of Avery's board. And to get a firsthand seat to your brilliance, to your vision, your hopes, dreams, and desires, for black people in this country has been inspiring. And um, I don't know if people know just how um, incredible of a person you are. And you've worked so hard to build ABLY as a respected organization. And um, we're now seeing the fruits of your labor. You have definitely earned this retirement um, and I really really sincerely wish that you have 
just an incredible next chapter that you um, have tons of fun, that you get an opportunity to rest, but also that you get a chance to continue to witness the brilliance of the organization that you helped to found. On behalf, on behalf of the Abley Board, the Abley Alumni, the philanthropic community, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Job well done. Congratulations to you, Yvette, on your retirement. We are celebrating you today for all that you've done, not just with Abley, but with many community organizations where you've led. And I know, because I've seen it firsthand, you and I have been friends for many years, and we've worked together on many different projects. Your success with Abley is exemplary. The board leadership program is a remarkable testament to your hard work and dedication and your vision. Congratulations on a successful career, and I wish you much success in the next chapter of your life. Yvette, it has been such a pleasure to get to know you as an alumna and a board member of Abley. You have inspired so many people, including me and the over 750 individuals who have graduated through the program, who are sitting on boards, and who are making a difference each and every day. I want to thank you for having the vision and for taking action to found this amazing organization. You truly embody hard work, optimism, and hope. I want to thank you for all that you've done, and I wish you the very best in this next season of life and in retirement. Thank you. Yvette, congratulations on a job well done at Abley. I fell in love with this organization from the very first time I participated in BLP. You know, the extraordinary and most amazing class number six. I was so impressed that I became a volunteer and eventually led some marketing efforts and now serving on the board. In the last six years, I have watched Abley continue to grow and touch lives throughout the community. I want to thank you for being bold enough to build an organization that is needed in our society, an organization preparing Black leaders to become active participants in their communities by making decisions at the board level. I am thankful to have you in my life. I wish you the very best. As I say, see you soon, because I know that we'll stay in touch. I want to leave you with some parting words inspired by a quote that I read. Legacy is not what you do for yourself, Yvette. It's what you're doing for the next generation. And you have truly left a legacy. Cheers and congratulations to you. Hi Yvette, it has been such an incredible joy to get to know you better. I've always seen you as an incredible force of nature and I, as a mentor and a really truly dear friend. I have enjoyed so many opportunities to work with you, particularly those late nights when we were trying to decide what was gonna be a part of the budget and I'm also really glad that you're getting an opportunity to move on to a different phase in your life. I hope at some point you have a scene like the one that's in my background, but at the same time, I know that you are going to move on to some other incredible magic that you'll create in the universe. I'm wishing you well and talk to you soon. Welcome back, you guys. I hope you guys are having a great time out there. It's your boy DJ Max controlling your eardrums, and we all turn it up just to make sure that we celebrate Yvette the right way. Happy 10 years from A Lee. Everybody loves you, and we just gonna keep this party going. So let's get it. Smooth jazz in that Motown mix event. I know that was for you. 
Welcome back, everyone, and thank you to each of the special speakers thus far. Your stories are truly inspiring, and they provide an intimate look into what devoted leadership really looks like. To our viewers, don't forget to visit the Leadership Legacy Fund via the QR code on your screen. Your donations will support Abley's ongoing efforts to significantly increase the representation of well-qualified African-American individuals on boards and in critical board leadership positions. You know, a true leader understands the value of relationships and long-term partnerships. Yvette and the Abley team are fortunate to have partnered with some of the most prominent community organizations and foundations in the country. These organizations align with Abley's mission and values. We will now hear from some of Abley's longtime external partners, starting with tonight's event sponsor. Please welcome Marsha Bonner, Executive Director of the Annenberg Foundation. Hello, my name is Marcia Bonner. I'm at the Annenberg Foundation. And I just wanted to say a few words about the fabulous Yvette Chappelle Ingram on the occasion of her retirement. The Annenberg Foundation has uh, worked closely with Abley over the past few years, and it's always been a joy and a pleasure to work with Yvette. We've referred so many organizations to Abley so that they could find competent and well-trained board members, and everyone has had a great experience working with Abley. I just wanted to say something personal about um, Yvette, and I will always remember when I arrived at Annenberg six years ago, Yvette and her board chair, Shirley, came to visit me, to welcome me to Los Angeles. And I cannot tell you how much that meant to me for you to welcome me to Los Angeles. I am envious of your retirement. I hope you have all the relaxation and fun that you so richly deserve. And Abley uh, is in good hands. I know that Virgil and everyone who's associated with Abley will make sure that they continue your vision and the mission of Abley. Goodbye, my dear friend, and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. Hi, for Yvette Chappelle Ingram. This is Dr. Bob Ross, California Endowment. Uh, dialing in from vacation uh, to bid farewell and appreciation to an incredible leader, a woman who consistently and constantly shows up with enthusiasm, with spirit, with energy, with passion, with confidence, and with humility. Uh, thank you, Yvette, for what you have done uh, with Abley over these years and making, uh, managing to make our friend Virgil Roberts look good, which isn't easy to do. Uh, but we love you so much, Yvette. Uh, God bless you in your next chapter. Uh, thank you for all you've done uh, for nonprofits and African Americans and community leaders uh, in Los Angeles and beyond. We appreciate you. Uh, we love you and God bless. Bye -bye. Greetings, Yvette. It's a pleasure to be part of your celebration. I just want you to know what a pleasure it's been all of these years one, having you lead a major project of community partners. Two, greeting you almost daily in the hallway or at your office. Um, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful working relationship, a collegial one, and one that has produced for the community some of the best people to serve on boards of directors in the city. I once asked you, um, can you get us royalty? and you did. Um, you got us royalty on our board, and I cannot be thankful enough uh, to have the relationship that we've had, and I know everyone in the community feels precisely the same way. Thanks again, congratulations on your retirement, and all the best for the years ahead. Thanks. Hi, Matt. This is Daryl Brown your longtime friend for almost 50 years. It's hard to imagine I have cherished every single moment of calling you one of my closest friends. And yet it was 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, that you and the phenomenal visionary Virgil Roberts walked into my office and sat down. And then you and Virgil painted this picture of board placement for African Americans. And I knew right away that this was something that was going to be special. And then you introduced me to the concept of the African American Board Leadership Institute, ABLE. I was blown away. I can imagine in that moment 
that we were going to make a difference in every boardroom in this country with this vision. I remember asking Virgil, who's going to run this thing? And he smiled, sat back in his chair and looked at you and said, you bet anyway. And I thought in that moment, oh my God, there could not be a better person. Your leadership is phenomenal. Your strategic mindset, the way you are with people, the way you activate things, your love of community, humanity, the love of friendship. It just means the world. Your legacy is going to last for many years to come. I think about your mission, lead, empower, aspire, diversify. You know, you breathe life into those words by selecting some of the best academics, the best facilitators, backed by the best board of directors. I mean, you only know one way to go, and that's to go to the top, and you did that. So as I think about all these images of you and I, I think about the first graduating class, I think about the last class, and the many classes to come. I have no doubt those that follow you will expand beyond the borders of Los Angeles. I often say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. We've got people at the table now. The quality of the decisions are going to be different. And every time I get an email about a board placement, you know, my heart skips a beat. Because of so, of course, you know, a few weeks back when I get this invitation, you know, about event and farewell, I was, what are you doing, going on vacation? No, I understood the real meaning that, you know, all good things must come to an end. So I went out of my way to do something extra special just to so let you know how much you mean and to wish you farewell. I know that we'll break bread in the very near future. God continue to shine light on all that you do and uh, all the great work of Abley. Congratulations. And it's not retirement, it's rewirement. We'll talk to you soon. As Vice President of Programs at Weingart Foundation, I am so pleased to honor and celebrate Yvette Chappelle Ingram's incredible leadership legacy. It is Yvette's leadership that the Foundation believed in and was investing in with its early support to help launch the African American Board Leadership Institute. I am proud to say that I am a graduate of the program and can attest to its excellence, but more importantly, so can so many of our grantees who continue to use ABLE as a resource in their board recruitment efforts. So congratulations, Yvette, on this next chapter, and thank you for your service and for the incredible impact you've had on so many organizations, Black leaders, and in our community. I'm Alan Alexander, and I'm the President, CEO, and Board Chair of the Johnny Carson Foundation. I first met with Yvette and Virgil Roberts in 2013 at the Bedford and Burns restaurant in Beverly Hills and learned about the very unique and meaningful work that the African American Board Leadership Alliance was doing and their plans to expand the program. Having served for many years on the Board of Directors of Economic Resources Corporation with its business park in Linwood, I knew of the importance of expanding the role of the African American community in board representation. In fact, three board members of ERC were trained at ABLE. Like all of you who have worked with Yvette, you know how effective she has been as the co-founder of the Institute and how much she has done along with Virgil and others in expanding the role of African Americans here in LA on foundation and nonprofit boards of directors. In 2013, when I recommended to my fellow board members at the Johnny Carson Foundation that we should fund ABLE, even though it was in its early stage of formation, all of my fellow board members agreed. Since then, we have continued to fund each year, and I have had the pleasure of personally attending their annual downtown tribute reception. Yvette, you will be missed not being at the helm of this important organization but I know that you will keep a keen eye watching it continue to flourish, and it will flourish. Thank you for all you have done to improve the community for so many years. The Johnny Carson Foundation wishes you a long and enjoyable retirement. It is well-deserved. Thank you. My name is Dutch Ross, and I am the former president and CEO of Economic Resources Corporation. I first met Yvette in the mid-1970s when we were both financial staffers at ARCO. It was apparent to me then that Yvette was a special person with a big heart who really cared about others and the community at large. 
Over the years, we worked together on a number of projects, including the South Los Angeles Executive Directors Forum, another organization devoted to ensuring that legacy organizations had the capacity and diversity required to be successful in their individual endeavors. When I heard that ABLE was being formed and that its board has selected Yvette as its first leader, I was very pleased. ERC shares the mission and the goals of ABLE and consequently has become a financial supporter of the organization. In addition to being a financial supporter, ERC has also called upon Yvette and ABLE to help us identify and recruit board members for our own governance. I'm pleased to say that we have three board members now who are ABLE alumni. Yvette, congratulations on your impending retirement, and you know you have my heartfelt best wishes for whatever new chapters you wish to embark upon. Yvette Chappelle Ingram, President and CEO of the African American Board Leadership Institute, co-founded the organization with Virgil Roberts in 2011. They set out to prepare a pipeline of African American professionals ready to serve on the boards of nonprofit organizations and government commissions. In time, ably expanded to include corporate boards. Yvette's legacy includes hundreds of talented, dynamic, and ably alumni making a difference in critical board leadership positions. The ably impact is felt across the region and beyond, enhancing the effectiveness of government boards and better reflecting the communities they serve. much to do. Absent her vision, innovative ideas and sweat equity, however, the organization's record of achievement would not have been possible.
As a vet retires from Abley, we salute her for a job well done and extend warm wishes as she embarks on a new journey. Abley has had the honor of providing board leadership training to hundreds of black professionals, graduating 18 classes in the last 10 years, placing over 250 alumni on nonprofit, foundation, commission, and corporate boards. What an accomplishment. We will now hear from some of those alumni who have been impacted by Abley's comprehensive and effective board leadership certificate program. Hello, this is Capri Maddox, Executive Director of the LA Civil Rights Department. It is my honor to wish Yvette Chappelle Ingram a happy and well-deserved retirement. As an alumni of the Abley class of 2013, class number two, I am so grateful for Yvette's leadership. It was Abley which helped me gain the skills, network, and the confidence to pursue my goals, not only in public service, but on local boards. And they placed me on the KPCC board, which is home to our number one NPR station, where I have the opportunity to serve with our co-founder, the other co-founder of Abley, uh, Mr. Virgil Roberts. Um, Abley was there when I became the second African-American woman to serve as the president of the LA Board of Public Works. And when I was appointed to serve as the executive director of partnerships for LAUSD. And um, also when I had an opportunity to serve as the special assistant city attorney for Los Angeles under the leadership of Mike Fuhr. Today, as I lead the city's first civil rights department, I bring everything I earned from Abley and Yvette's leadership to guide my work. She not only helped me, but generations of African-American leaders, and she not only changed their lives, the lives of others. Um, I think it's important to know that when more diverse faces are in leadership positions, we have better outcomes. And Yvette, you made that dream a reality through your work. So happy retirement and know that your impact will carry on for generations to come. Enjoy. We'll miss you. We love you. We celebrate you. We honor you. Hey, Yvette, it's my honor to say a few words about your excellent service to Abley. Just watching the organization grow, I, of course, was with class one and saw how much hard work you did pulling people together, making sure things were set up on time, uh, just executed. And then as the organization grew, how you just were able to kind of manage the change very well. And now ABLE is an organization that's respected throughout the country and as a model for other ethnic groups trying to do the same thing because it's so important especially after the last year of reckoning that happened in our country, that we get more African-Americans serving in these important board seats in corporations, nonprofit, and government boards. So Abley is a great trendsetter. You were the founding director, and now you leave it for the next stage to the next level. So sincerely, good luck. Uh, hope you do well. Don't get too competitive with your Fitbit steps with your friends out there in Altadena. God bless. Take care of yourself. Greetings, my name is Brent Burton and I serve as a fire captain with the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And I'm also the board chair for the Los Angeles Cares Mentoring Movement, a nonprofit organization. I'm also a proud Abley alumni of class number three. I wanna take this opportunity to say congratulations, Yvette, on your retirement. I know you're going to enjoy the rest of your life, but I wanna just say this, you've been very instrumental in the growth of Abley. It's because of you and the help of others, of course, but you were very instrumental in growing the organization to what it is. I remember coming to visit you at the office and having conversations about recruiting board members. You were always there. You're always accommodating. So I just want to say thank you so much for all that you've done. And again, enjoy your retirement and congratulations. Thank you. Yvette, I have enjoyed working with you during your ably tenure. When I first met you at the City Club and I said hello, you immediately responded, Hello, my name is Yvette. Do you know about Abley? I had not. And the rest is history. I graduated from the 10th class. I was delighted by the education that was offered, the presenters, and the participant sessions. You made me an advocate. Because everywhere I went, I, if I heard about a corporate board discussion, I immediately said, Do you know Yvette? Do you know Abley? And of course, they had not and the rest was history with them. Well, I was so excited about Abley that I kept asking you, when is Abley gonna take this program to the East Coast? 
you started making those inroads by connecting with many groups throughout LA, the state. My God, your tireless efforts were there to push the graduates to opportunities. You expanded partnerships with businesses, foundations, government entities, all to make sure that Abley's students, their graduates, would get those coveted com corporate boards and those commission seats. I know that the Abley family will miss you, and I know I shall miss you. But go forth, enjoy your retirement. Don't go too far, because I sure don't want to miss you. Let's continue to keep things going on, but have fun during your retirement. Beverly here. Oh, we're going to keep the party going. Once again, we are here to celebrate Yvette and all the work that she's put in for the last 10 years. Oh, we love it, and we love you, Yvette. Let's keep this going, though. DJ Banks, kick DJs. Let's go. Thank you to all of the alumni we heard from tonight. Your ambassadorship is critical to the success of Abley. Once again, we encourage everyone to donate to the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund via the QR code on your screen. We will now hear from some of Yvette's colleagues and community leaders who have supported her and Abley over this past decade. These dynamic women run local and national organizations and are committed to the similar training of BIPOC professionals for leadership roles. Hi, Yvette. Congratulations on your retirement. I will say that I'm both a little jealous and envious, but I'm also sad too, because I won't be able to work with you anymore. I really appreciate our friendship, our collaboration. I remember um, when we first met and connected, um, I just felt such an affinity with you and, and we both really had similar goals in terms of what we want to do for our communities. And I, I just really feel like I just appreciate so much your support, your love, your collaboration, your encouragement, and I'm gonna miss all of that. Even though you will be often doing, you know, lots of great things, I'm sure, again, I will really miss being able to do that with you through Abley. I just wanna say, you know, best wishes, whatever it is that you're gonna do, you're gonna be fantastic at it. And I really wish whatever's the best for you and that you'll be able to have, um, you know, a, a wonderful just time doing whatever your next pursuit is going to be. So with that, I just want to say again, congratulations. And thanks for letting me also be able to say this farewell message to you. But it's not a final farewell, but it's a farewell to you as the executive director of Abley. See you again. Well, Yvette, as the president of the Center for Nonprofit Management and your neighbor down the hall for many years, I want to say first, congratulations for your retirement but more importantly for all the work that you've done. Um, I remember often hearing how Abley started out as a project, an idea that you and Virgil had, and look at what you've accomplished. You built such an important organization that now is getting, you know, boards to think about how purposeful and productive they can be with African-American representation at the table at a time when so much needs to be addressed. Um, but on a very personal note, I just want to say that I so appreciated all the nights that we spent down the hall talking about what we hope to accomplish, how many jobs you were covering with this big footprint of Abley and the very small team that you had. And um, I just so hope that you get to take into this next chapter uh, some real pride that you've done so much for so many that you will never meet and that um, you know that you have a friend in me and we will go on our walks and we will talk. And I look forward to many, many, many miles with you, my friend. Congratulations. Dear Yvette, I am feeling both excited and apprehensive about your retirement from Abley. It's such an honor to pay tribute to your work and the enormity of your work, the number of organizations and countless people served by them who benefit from your tireless efforts to conceptualize, plan, implement the work of Abley. 
It has been a joy to watch the interest, responses, and visibility of Abley grow under your nurturance. And I'm sure I speak for many who have admired and learned from your leadership. So my apprehension is personal. What will I do after you retire? Who will I look forward to meeting in the courtyard to keep me caught up on stuff I need to know? Who will be there with words of encouragement, support, and genuine sisterhood when life gets tough? I so look forward to finding out what successful retirement looks like, and I'm counting on getting that vision through your eyes. Like always, I and others will be asking, what would Yvette do? All good wishes and many, many hugs for you, my sis. Happy retirement. First of all, Yvette, congratulations on your retirement. But second of all, I don't expect you to be fully retired. I expect you to maintain your commitment to the importance of civic engagement as you have done so well at Abley all these years. It's important that we have a seat at the table to discuss the policies and programs that can positively affect our community. We have to struggle in our community to continue the fight for a more perfect community. But we only can do this as a community united, as a community that knows how the system works so that changes can be made. So that's why we at LAWPI, the Los Angeles African American Women's Public Policy Institute, will continue to ask you to serve on our faculty, to help train a new generation of women who may want to serve on boards and commissions, who may want to start their own community-based organizations, or who may simply want to run for public office themselves. They have to hear your voice on how to accomplish some of these goals. Our community may not be perfect uh, in our lifetime, but as Keith Ellison said this morning when I heard him on television, he said his mother gave him some advice, and it was that you don't love a perfect person. Well, we may not love our society, but we will help to make it more perfect, and we will do this together. Thanks so much, and good luck. Welcome back. It's your boy DJ Max, one half of the Kick DJs. And once again, we are here celebrating Yvette and all the work she has put in for this organization. So what I need y'all to do is wipe your brow, take another sip of your beverage, and I'm gonna slow it down for you real quick. Oh, I know it's nighttime, but we going on a morning dance. Let's get it. Let's go. Thank you to each and every one of Abley's external partners. Without your collaboration, Yvette and Abley could not have achieved its mission. An organization is not only defined by its fearless leaders, but in this case, also by the staff and faculty that help execute the work to carry out an intensive board governance training program. Tonight, we are joined by Abley's first and former staff member, also joining us are past and current faculty members who will speak on their roles with the organization and the impact Yvette's leadership has had on their careers. Hi everyone, it's Katerina. I was Abley's first employee. I started as an intern and then slowly progressed to become the manager of programs and operations under Yvette's leadership and guidance. I must say that she is the best boss I have ever had. She always emphasized self-care in the office. Uh, she always made sure we celebrated the good times. Every time we'd get a grant check, we would dance. Um, and so I really appreciate that energy and I hope that I brought it into every workplace since then. Uh, Yvette, congratulations. Uh, thank you for the impact that you have made on my life, uh, but on everybody else's life who has touched this organization. Uh, your leadership and your legacy is certainly one of grace and style. So congratulations again and wishing you the best in the next chapter. Take care. Yvette, you have been the heart and soul of Abley. I can't imagine Abley without you. 
but I know you and Abley will thrive no matter what comes your way. You and I met prior to Abley, and I was struck then by your feisty determination, but I didn't know the half of it. Our Abley partnership began when I left you what I believe was a pretty lengthy note suggesting changes to the program, and you, true to your nature, called me and said, I want you to be on faculty, and then later director. And one thing I now know is that what Yvette wants, Yvette gets. So that began our journey, working hard to bring the best to program participants, along with all the fabulous faculty you recruited to be a part of your team. I am so grateful that I was able to be a part of your vision, and I wanna thank you for all that you brought and all that you've taught me and others. We appreciate you and wish you the best. Hello, Yvette. Zachary Green here. Let me start off by saying gratitude. Gratitude for the, your visionary leadership and uh, to thank you for inviting me to be a part of one of the most important professional periods of my life. When uh, the OG faculty of the board leadership program with Bricks and Latanya and Paul got together along with Vicki and Katerina, that was some good times where we were able to look at not only the fundamentals of finances and fundraising and uh, board governance, also you said, okay, we need to look at what happens when you're on the board, all of that invisible skills stuff, implicit bias, microaggression. And you allowed me to have a platform to bring those things forward and later on to be able to bring that same kind of thinking to, to scale with, broad, with a broad-based look at how this affected other nonprofits. Uh, what you have done and what you founded was the capacity to bring African-American voices to change the conversations fundamentally at tables in ways that could not be imagined just a few years ago. Uh, uh, it is with uh, great sadness also that I uh, say goodbye to your leadership, but also uh, heartfelt congratulations for what has already been accomplished and what will go forward because of you. Best wishes and much love. <laughs> About Chappelle Ingram, you are a life changer. Through your quiet strength, sharp focus, and untiring diligence, you've developed knowledge, opened doors, fostered lasting relationships, and achieved Abley's vision. In partnership with you, we as faculty created models for Black leaders to demonstrate how powerful we are in community, introvert or extrovert, and how our folks can demonstrate and dominate in the field of fundraising. Rising out of the Black experience, we leverage traditions and innovation to unleash the superpowers of Black leaders. I have to personally thank you for gifting me with the experience of working with original faculty and the countless classes of ABLE we taught in those early years of the board leadership program, all in person, no less. But most important to me is to thank you for saving me from Washington, D.C. with repeated trips home to L.A. to build and deliver the program. You provided me a lifeline more valuable than you could ever know. For all this and more, I salute you, I congratulate you, and I thank you. I wish you every happiness. Hi, my name is Greg Gorman, and I am so happy to be here to help give or provide some of the recognition acknowledgement and appreciation that Yvette so richly, so richly deserves. I've worked with her for more than 10 years and we've had our lows. We had to actually shut down a nonprofit to the highs, such as the great success and impact that she's had at Abler. Now, Yvette, you say that you are retiring, but you have lived a life of service, which means no deed goes unpunished you have a lot to pay for. So you're not retiring, you're a glutton for punishment, and you can do more good deeds. I look forward to what your next step is going to be. Congratulations and best wishes. Thank you, Yvette, for creating Ably. You know, we go way back to first AME days when we used to sing, everything is all right in the Ably house. 
Okay, we didn't say in the Abley house, but we should have said in the Abley house because everything is all right in the Abley house because of what you created. I started in class three and I had no idea that I would still be along this journey years later, helping to write newsletter articles, working on committees, consulting, and now becoming a BLP instructor. It is because of the gift you have of bringing people together in collaboration and a collective unit and scaffolding on our skills so that we create this rhythmic melody of unity and love. That is what ABLE is about. And that's what you created. The African American Board Leadership Institute, one of the most significant organizations of this century for black people. You did that. Congratulations. Once again, it's your boy DJ Mix, and we're here for a celebration. There's no tears out here. It's nothing but happy faces and smiling faces out there. Because everybody is showing Yvette the love that she deserves, and we're going to keep rocking with her tonight. So sit back and relax, because I got you. Yvette and Virgil realize the real issues surrounding the lack of access to board leadership positions for African Americans. They agreed to create the pipeline necessary to connect black professionals with organizations seeking to diversify their boards. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Virgil Roberts, the other co-founder and current board chair of ABLE. He will share special sentiments and insights into what it was like kickstarting ABLE with Yvette. Welcome, Virgil Roberts. Thank you, Leslie. It's really been uh, wonderful to watch the program and all the comments have been made uh, about Yvette. Uh, and it's gratifying to me in some respects because it validates the feeling I had some 11 years ago when I first really met Yvette and got to know her. I met Yvette because she was putting together these programs called Meet the Funders. Uh, she was president of the California Legislative Black Caucus Foundation. And one of the things she was trying to do was to help constituent groups in the various districts of the, of the folks she represented really begin to understand how do you go about raising money and, be, and, be, and becoming effective. She invited me to speak at a number of her sessions. And what I immediately picked out from Yvette is that she was a servant leader who really believed that her mission was to serve her fellow man and especially those in the black community. And so uh, Yvette and I started to have breakfast because I said, you know, we have to figure out something that we can do together because I recognize the skills you have, but more importantly, the passion that you have, your ability to organize and work with people and so we started meeting and had a series of monthly breakfasts over a number of months trying to figure out what could we do to really have the kind of impact in the Black community that we wanted to see. We eventually decided that we could start an organization with limited resources and try and have maximum impact by training people to be in the room where it happens. Uh, it's a relatively modest sort of organization, but the impact could be great. So I always say, you know, I kind of created the idea with Yvette, and then I got to pontificate about what it ought to be. But then she really made it happen. She was the one who built the staff. She was the one who was there for every program. She was the one that was there to coach and guide the uh, staff that we hired. She was the one that became the heart and soul of Abley. And I am so pleased with what she did to create an organization that works from the ideas that she and I kicked around over breakfast at Pans for uh, a number of months. Uh, Abley has 
worked to be exactly what we hoped it would be. That organization that inspired black professionals to get involved, to get a seat at the table, to begin to help make the decisions that we now talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. But when we started 11 years ago, our goal was to be that that would put people in the boardroom to ensure that diversity, equity, and inclusion would include the Black perspective on, on so many issues. Uh, the things that Yvette has done has been really remarkable. Uh, over the last hour or so, we've heard from literally every segment of our community with the impact that Yvette has had on organizations, on individuals, on our community, and ultimately on our nation. I'm so pleased to have partnered with her to start the African American Board Leadership Institute. Uh, she's a woman of great intelligence, great empathy, uh, and more importantly, a tireless worker and a true servant leader. For her, it was not about how much money she could make. It was not about uh, what kind of notoriety she was gonna receive in the public. It was about helping her people have a real impact in the world in which we live. For that, I will always be forever grateful to Yvette. And all of us who care about this community should be grateful to her for what she's done in helping to create an organization that I hope will live on for many, many years to come. Uh, she helped build a ship. She helped the, the create the North Star for where that ship is going. She launched the ship. And it's up to those of us who are stewards to make sure that her efforts and what she created is not in vain. Yvette, I love you. I respect you. Uh, I don't expect you to retire and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> I have actually convinced you uh, to take on a contract so you'll be available to consult with us for the next year and help us continue to sell in the direction we should go. Um, so for, for all of you who know Yvette, and many of you are, are here, you recognize the important treasure she is to our community someone that uh, has left a legacy that will, that will live on. Yvette, thank you. I love you so much. Uh, it's been truly my honor and pleasure to work with you, not for 10 years, but over the last 11 years. I'd also be remiss if I did not thank uh, the Abley staff. <laughs> Putting together this tribute reception was really very much instituted by the staff. So uh, Vicki Prothero came to me with the idea and said, what sh what's the budget? I want to do this for Yvette. She has been the one that really spearheaded putting all this together. Vicki, thank you so very much. Um, for all of you who gave your videos and who participated, um, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to record something and leave it for posterity. I think Yvette absolutely appreciates all that has been said by community members, former uh, instructors, board members, both past and <laughs> All of you honored Yvette by your participation tonight. Um, and last but certainly not least, I wanna thank uh, the Annenberg Foundation for really being uh, the sponsor for tonight. I want to thank all of our sponsors who've been there for us from the, from the beginning. Uh, our very first sponsor was Bob Ross. Yvette and I went to see him uh, 11 years ago and said we had this idea to try and create a pipeline of professionals to be in the room where it happens. Uh, he stepped up and said, I will support you guys tell me what you need, sounds like a good idea, so I'm gonna do it out of my president's discretionary budget because I don't wanna put it to the board, uh, but I believe in you and he's continued to believe in us and has been our supporter uh, from the beginning. Uh, and even tonight with the video he did, 
uh, from some place that goes unreported, he said, I got to do something to let Yvette know that I so appreciate what she has done uh, for our community and for the nonprofit sector. So uh, I thank all of you who are here tonight uh, to honor Yvette. Uh, we need your continued support. We are a small organization that we but the need for our voices has never been greater. We cannot do of all of you who are here listening. Um, we're in the process of trying to find a new leader. We we won't find someone that will be that, 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 that. we'll find somebody that will help carry the organization forward in the in the ensuing years. So I thank you all. And uh, the, before I leave, I want to introduce uh, the woman who is really the the brains behind what we've done tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Vicki Prothman. Thank you, Virgil. Wow, after a rocky start, Thank you everyone for your patience. Please know that India Alston and her production team, Being Creative Ag Agency, apologize for the many unforeseeable tech issues. It's live, it's virtual, and I hope everyone buckled up, especially you, Yvette. I hope you're uh, holding tight and holding on. Hang in there, we've got a few more surprises for you. And everyone, thank you for your patience. Thank you for generosity. I'm hearing from the staff. Uh, George, they're behind the scenes running fast and furious as well. Uh, we want to acknowledge that donations are coming in to support the new announced Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund. Bravo. Thank you, everybody. What I'd like to say is that um, our mighty staff of three recently met to pre-record our personal messages and to present you, Yvette, with a custom design gift. So everybody, please hold on, and then we still have a little bit more. We're almost there. Please roll tape. Yvette, words cannot truly explain what an honor it has been to work under your leadership. In addition to the traditional leadership qualities you possess, like innovation, drive, and your go-getter attitude, you're also extremely kind and selfless. While I do wish I had more time to glean from your wealth of knowledge, I'm also very excited for all the experiences you are sure to have during your retirement. Avely would not be what it is without you, and I'm excited to honor your legacy by continuing the work you started. The community would not be the same had you and Virgil not taken the leap of faith necessary to start this organization when you did. Thank you for a decade of commitment and for paving a way for black professionals to gain a seat at the table. Yvette, your leadership has shaped this organization's ability to translate Avery's mission into reality. Your energy and zest are some of my favorite qualities that you embody. In addition to being a dynamic leader, you have great wisdom and strength. During this past year, you showed me just how resilient you were and how graceful you could be in the midst of a storm. My time with this organization has been extremely transformative because of you. I wish you well as you take on a new chapter in your life. Retirement has a lot in store for you and I look forward to hearing all about it. Thank you for your tremendous leadership. Thank you, Yvette, for choosing me to join Avely's team of doers. Seven years ago, we welcomed class number five to Avely's dynamic alumni network. Since then, the growth of this organization under your leadership has been nonstop. You embraced me for who I am. You also challenged me to be the best at whatever project or adventure was ahead of us. Allowing me to blend my work experience with your vision created an opportunity for me to evolve into your strategic advisor in areas that I could not have imagined in 2014. I appreciate your trust in me to have a hand in every aspect of Abley's operations. Thank you for allowing me the space needed to grow by learning from setbacks, from empowering me to manage the implementation of a new CRM, 
to lead in the expansion of the new communications and marketing efforts to produce the first Ably Board Talks video series and manage challenges created by differences in leadership styles and opinions, yet we seem to always land on the solutions that ultimately supported the common goal, and that is the success of Ably. Ably transforms lives, and my life has forever been transformed. Lifting you, Yvette, enlighten love, peace and blessings. Yvette, the team got together to get a special gift to commemorate your retirement. Yes, we commissioned piece by piece to design a gift specifically with you in mind. It's time to resume. Welcome back, you guys. It's your boy DJ Mix, one half of the Kick DJs. And like I said, we've been here celebrating Yvette all night. And I got one more special treat for you guys. I have Tiffany Archibald, Yvette's niece, and the family representative for the Chappelle family about to drop a special message for you guys right after this. <laughs> Hands to the heavens, no man, no weapon. Formed against, yes, glorious destiny. Every day women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice is juxtaposition in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. Once some die, the spirit is revisited us. True and living, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why our roses sat on the bus. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. My name is Tiffany Archibald. Um, I am here representing our beautiful, illustrious family, as well as an alumni of the ABLE program, class of 17. So um, we've heard so many individuals that have worked with my Auntie Teddy over the years and decades as professionals and individuals in that realm of her professional life. But what you guys don't understand is as a family member, as someone who has been a leader throughout her family, those same attributes are contributed within our households, within our family bonds. It doesn't stop just in her professional world. Um, my grandmother, Irma Washington, um, helped raise my Auntie Teddy. And from there, she has just taken off. Um, I've always admired her just like my aunts and my cousins and everyone in our family. She went to USC. I just so happened to be a Trojan as well. Um, but one of the things that we really like to touch upon as a family member is just the grace and the presence that she has and the passion that she has, whether it's something as simple as planning, uh, well, not simple, but family um, Thanksgivings at her home, the details that she puts into making everything so perfect. Those translate to what you guys see in the boardroom when she's writing out um, notes and messages for the different community members and things like that. Um, we also thank her so much for just always being the voice, the voice of reason, the voice of change. <laughs> Our family in a direction that, you know, we can go now as not only myself as an alumni, but my other family members. And um, one of the things that I really wanted to touch upon tonight is the fact that I am just a conduit speaking on behalf of her beautiful, gracious, loving, intelligent, go-getter. I mean, a clone of who this woman is that you guys are seeing and speaking of. That was embodied in my cousin, Terry. I know that her presence is felt. I know that she is here and she is smiling and she is so happy and so gracious to you all for saying the wonderful things about her mother, which she saw growing up every day, growing up and being pushed to the professional that she was. So I just want to say, Auntie Teddy, you are truly a treasure. You are the epitome of body, 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 body to be a part of, to share the same bloodline. 
but also to have that image, to have that martyr in our family where we are just thankful for you and all that you do. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from all of our family members, and just know that your retirement, may it be brief in what you're doing right now, it's always going to show in everything that you've done throughout the community and throughout the world. So I would like everyone to raise a glass for the signature drink that was created for my aunt and just cheers, cheers to who you are inside and out, the illustrious, the beautiful, the incomparable, the extremely talented, Auntie Teddy, but to you guys, Yvette Chappelle Ingram, love you all. <laughs> And here she is, the queen of queens. It's your floor to be taken. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Thank you. I did not know what was gonna be or who was gonna be on the program. I had an idea, but I, <laughs> this has been amazing from the DJ to the drinks to everyone. Um, and <laughs> But I, I just wanna say that I have enjoyed this journey. I, I don't know, some of you, many of you know me from way back, but 30 years ago, I made a transition um, to work in the nonprofit sector. Since I had no idea what I was doing, I sought the advice of uh, about 20 people that provided me with some guidance. Fast forward uh, 11 years ago, and I think Virgil and I really met uh, about 15 years ago, but 11 years ago, we started on this journey to form ABLY. You know what? We were razor focused on our vision to create a pipeline of African-American professionals to be on boards. You know what? We had no money and no people. You hear we had no money and we had no people. So both of us pulled our funds, uh, some funds, Virgil put in 2,500, I put in a thousand and we shared, uh, we shared this vision with le leaders like Ravita Bowers, with Carl Bolton, with Eugene Bo Boykins, with Beverly Ryder and Vincent Jones and Paul Hudson and they all believed in this vision and they soon became our founding board members. So we did, in terms of our funding, Bob Ross, as Virgil said, was our very first uh, funder. I remember sitting down, to tell you the story, we were sitting down, 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 down and Bob knew each other, Bob didn't know me. So they were talking and they, they had a conversation going on and I was just sitting there. And, and so he was sharing the vision. Bob looked over at Virgil and he said, how's the sister gonna get paid? I was shocked. And, and that just, I, I will never forget that. He was, he was definitely one of our funders. But we talk about when we st first started out, things were really, um, things, things were, uh, somewhat tight for us in the beginning, but we made sure where the money went was in really building a reputation around Abley, building a reputation to have the best classes to have, um, you know, you, you heard the term fake it till you make it. Well, we wanted to actually look like we had money. We wanted to look like uh, we were, you know, it, you know, operating out of a, you know, big Taj Mahal or something. But I will tell you, um, we got, we did tap into the best faculty to, to really share, uh, you know, share this vision and actually teach. And we were onto something. Our faculty really showed up and showed out. And I, I'm quite sure. Quite, you quite, know, quite, quite, our, our, our. And who taught? Paul Hudson came on board with finances. 
Latanya Slack and Zachary Green. And then came Yolanda Gorman, Greg Gorman, and Dion Gordon. You know, we've had such great experience. And then we had speakers and panelists uh, that really helped us out, like Gil Ray and yeah. David Crippens and Fran Jamat and Frank uh, Jeff Sakaguchi. And there were others as well. I didn't know Fran and, and Jeff would be on this call, but I had you in here. So the point is this, we never did this by ourselves. I didn't do it by myself. We didn't do it by ourselves. And it's, it, it truly takes a village. And I'm thrilled that we played a part in, in, in moving forward this organization. Some, what I'm most proud of is the environment we created to help build community. It never fails in each one of those classes um, that participants came up to us and, you know, Vicki can attest to this and Katerina can attest to it. They always said, I have never been in a professional learning environment with so many people that look like me. Regardless if you went to, you know, college and it was a black institution, but in your professional learning environment, this is what we hear time and time again. As Virgil mentioned, I'm a servant leader. And I'm a servant leader because I know that God is my compass. And I, I know that God is my compass and I, and I don't do things you know, spontaneously. I have to really think about it and, and listen to see if this is the direction I needed to go in and ably was the direction. You know, this, this work has allowed me to be, meet the most incredible people, people that I would not have met. And, and I just wanna say thank you. Thank you to everyone. But I'd like to say a colleague, of course, Virgil Roberts for keeping me focused for for his leadership and he being the voice of reason as well. To our staff members that you, that you were introduced earlier, but Vicki is our longest staff member and she is definitely um, helps to navigate us through many of our uh, dilemmas. To our, you've heard from some of, our, you heard from our board members, I couldn't do it without you. We can't do it alone. But I do want to say, and it, she's going to kill me, but that's okay, because I have rights. <laughs> but I'd really like to thank uh, Brenda Roberts. I, I love that woman. She, is, she has really kept us steady in terms of her written word, in terms of, of how we present ourselves to uh, the public. May it be on our website, maybe it be in our newsletter. She is our volunteer uh, journalist, our volunteer everything. So I, I love you, Brenda. And I'd like to say thank you to my husband, Reggie, who has uh, been supportive and along. Thank you for taking this journey. Yes, 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 yes. Um, to my sister friends, I know that we're, I, I have a couple of groups of sister friends Thank you for listening to, to and bouncing all of this off. Uh, my ideas, maybe my anxieties, thank you for being there. Because you have to have, you know, sisters got to have sister friends, right? And, and, and prayer circles as, as well, because sometimes you got to pray things up. And to our donors and funders. Um, and thank you, Marsha. You can't thank sponsors enough. No, 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 no. You thank them too many times. And, and, and I think this well-deserved. Now, people often ask me, how, did I, how do I feel? How do I feel about leaving? I said that, that, that is sad because there's a part of me that don't want to give this up. I don't want to give up 
the experience that I that I've had time after time. But last year uh, was particularly difficult for me. I lost my only daughter to a disease called a dreaded disease called ALS in April of last year, and and I found a need to slow down and focus elsewhere. So to so it's, it's sad in those two cents, but I also feel joy. I feel joy because with the help of my coach, I've created some great opportunities to get excited about. Mainly the first thing that we will, I will be doing for the next six months is working on a documentary with my grandson, Nicholas Chappelle Way. And I feel good about this. So, Everyone, my job here is over. And I need and I will be passing the baton over to others. Um, and I'd like to leave with you one of my favorite poems. And that I that I many of you have heard before, and I had to grab it. And it says, I arise in the morning torn between the desire to improve the world and the desire to enjoy the world. This makes it hard to plan the day. Well, I think planning the day is gonna get just a little bit easier for me and um, I look forward to it. So I wanna say thank you to everyone out there, everyone who has joined us. Thank you, I feel, I feel the love and I'm, I'm, I, will, I will see you again. Thank you so much. Yvette, your tenacity and fearlessness in leading ably to where it is today, it is a testament to your commitment to increase the number of African Americans in the boardroom. To the ably staff, board, partners, and family, your contributions have made tonight's event a special and unforgettable occasion for Yvette. We also would like to thank everyone in attendance for joining us this evening. Please know that we value each of you as an integral part of the ably movement. Before we all say goodnight, I would be remiss if I did not ask one last time for you to donate to the Yvette Chappelle Ingram Leadership Legacy Fund. If you missed the QR code provided during the event, please visit Abley's website. Join us as we march forward in the pursuit of diversity and equity in the boardroom. Thank you for joining us and goodnight.